Hi, Mart here, and today I'm doing another animation tutorial for Krita because there's a new version of Krita 3.1 and there are some slight changes and also I think I haven't like explained everything in my last tutorial and some things can be still confusing so I will explain everything here and hopefully it will be better video than the last one so let's start it. When you open Krita you will see something like this. The first thing you have to do is to create a new file because if you're not create if you don't have opened any file in your Krita, you can't change anything. Okay? So first thing, create a new file. So file, new file, select some dimensions of the document and PPI and stuff. It doesn't really matter, just pick whatever size you want. Okay, now we have some canvas here. But we want to animate and we don't have any animation dockers here, so we need to change our workspace. To do so, just click on the right top here and change it to animation, like this. And now we have few new dockers here. The animation docker and the timeline docker down here. We can a little bit expand this. Okay. Before we start, if you want to like do some animation, you probably need some more brushes than just your default one. So to add the Docker with brushes, just go settings, dockers, and pick brush presets, and you have all your brushes here. You can just you know. So you can just pick whatever brush you want. These are mine brushes, you will probably have something different here. Okay, let's start with the dockers. The first one is the timeline. It's just a regular timeline, like these are frames, this is your layer, and you can like zoom the timeline with this. Just click and drag to right, left, top, down, it doesn't matter. We'll just zoom out. Okay, and this here it comes a little confusing thing is when you actually go to your layers, Docker here, and add a new layer. See, this only changed the number here because you don't have actually add any layer to your timeline yet. I know this is kind of confusing, but this is only like you see preview of your selected layer in the timeline. It's not like that the layer is actually in the timeline yet. Okay. To add the layer to your timeline, you have to click to this plus here, add existing layer, and click on the one. See, now when I click on the second one, it's just a preview again. But to one, the first layer is actually there already, okay? Okay, and now let's remove this one. So, to somehow like not be that confused, just don't use the layers docker and just use this plus and add new layer with this. Okay, it's way easier and you don't have to like, uh, <laughs> you don't have to think about what layer is actually there and what is just a preview and stuff. Okay. Now, we have a two layers here, and that's pretty much it for now for the timeline. So let's explain the animation docker here. Okay, in animation docker, this first number is just a position on the timeline. It's kind of straightforward. Uh, start and end. This is just how, like, where your animation is starting and when it's ending. This is for the player and for the export later. This is the player. By the way, it's in the frames. It's not in seconds. This could maybe someone could be kind of confused from this, but I don't think so. But yeah, I'm just saying. This is the player. I just the play and stuff. It's just <laughs> easy. I won't be explaining this. Uh, now the play speed. This affects only the player, not the final export. So it will just play faster. 
if you set it some different number or slower and frame rate just a regular frame rate how many frame frames per second you want to play it or I think even export it later now these six icons here the first one is to add a new frame the second one is copy previous frame to your position and the last one is to remove frame that's kinda easy and these three icons down here this last one is drop frames this is only for the player when your computer is not fast enough to be able to r render all the frames in like the right frame rate and everything if you have this on your computer can actually drop frames that he's not able to render fast enough so your animation will be still like fluid and same speed just with like some frames are won't be shown okay this is good if you have like really large canvas or something yeah it helps this one is out of frame mode this is also kind of confusing I will get to this later as what it's supposed to do is to add frame when you start drawing on some add keyframe when you start drawing on some frame on the timeline okay and the last one is the onion skins docker this if you click this onion skins docker will show up okay so I click it and now I have the onion skins docker here for do who don't know uh, what onion skins docker is it just allows you to see the f previous frames and next frames when you are on some frame okay it's just showing you like this uh, little like ghost frames from the from the future and from the past okay so and with this setting with the default setting you will see like next frames with green color previous frames with red color tint is just uh, like saturation of these colors and the zero means I think the zero is like the zero frames frame from the your position so it means the frame right next to you okay and this is just the first and second it's like you know counting it's not counting from one but from zero for some reason it doesn't matter and you can turn them off by clicking on these numbers it will went gray that means it will not show up and or change like the opacity with this okay let's get it back now I will add this to my animation docker so now I have these two cards I can switch between them pretty fast okay now let's show it in action no, let's click on the layer one and the first thing I'm gonna do is to explain you why on layer one is onion skin not working so why the why the onion skin on layer one is not working it's because it's a background layer okay so if I add the frame here and do something and turn on the onion skin which is this little light bulb be careful about this you have to have this turn on and add a new layer, new frame here and draw something I can't see the onion skin see? this is because it's a background layer okay? that's it, I haven't found any other explanation to it you can just remove it and add a new layer for background if you want the background to change or something it doesn't matter just yeah, it's not working on layer one. That's it. <laughs> okay. So let's actually s look how the onions, how the onion skins working on normal layers. Okay. So let's add new frame, turn on the onion skin, and now when I start drawing something, okay, this is like the first frame. Let's add something on frame three. See, the previous frame is red. Let's add something on frame 6 that's new frame see all are red when I get back it's green the next frames are green and my frame is black okay 
that's how the onion skin works. Or you can use the auto frame mode. So, for example, you just add the first layer here, just click on the free, and start drawing. See? The next frame is red, so you don't have to actually add the frames, okay? And let's click on six. See? It's just again red. Come back to free, it's green. It's green. That's pretty easy. Now let's show up how this icon works. So what I said that it will copy the previous frame. So let's get on six and now I want this frame to be copied here. So I will just do this. See? And this frame is copied here. Yeah, also one little thing I almost forgot. If for some reason it's it happens like uh, this little thing is not working properly with the onion skin, you know, the auto, auto frame mode is not working with onion skins. Just add the frames manually. It will work this way. It's like 100% that it will work with manual added frames. And for some reason, I s from time to time, this is not working properly. It's actually adding only like, you will see everything uh, black or you know in your color and it will not showing the onion skin properly I don't know why just better it the better way is just using like manually adding frames and deleting them manually okay and now let's get to actually exporting the animation yeah I won't be animating this video because I don't really have time to do it so I will take some old animation I've did in the past and show you how to export it Okay, so let's do it. So now let's export the animation. But as I said, I don't have time to actually create the animation. So I already have the animation done. But f I have it already exported in the sequence of PNGs. So now I need to actually put it in my timeline. And to do so, the Krita has actually the import uh, option, uh, the import function right now, to actually be able to import sequence of images into your timeline, which is super cool. And you can do it by file and import animation frames. But as you can see, I can't use this right now because I have timeline in my timeline. I have layer, but there are no frames on it. So I will add a new frame, just empty frame there. And now I can use the import animation frames. So let's click on it. Now add frames. And in a second I will find where my frames are stored. Okay, I've got these about 19 frames I think. Yeah. And Let's click open. It's good to use the numbers for the frames when you're exporting them or it doesn't matter. Uh, let's open. You can select the order or, or if it's ascending or descending or and if it's alphabetical or numerical, it doesn't matter. And start frame and step count like which like where to put it in the timeline, okay? That's like easy. And just hit OK. Now everything will see. It. This only shows three frames, but if I like change it, shows every frame here. Okay. Now we have the change, the end of the animation of to your like number of frames. It was hundred before. Let's change it to eighteen. And now we can try to play the animation. See, it works. So it's just a basic run cycle I did like a few months ago for a little game I was working on in school. Okay, so uh, now let's export the animation. Okay, so file and render animation. Okay, we get this little render animation window here. So there are two choices. 
either you can export it as a se sequence of images. This is good for like games and stuff. But if you actually want to show like some video or you know create some like animation video or whatever or post it online on some social network or something you have to render it in some gif or some mp4 file or whatever so with the images you just base, ma base name this will create like a bunch of files with this name plus some number behind it okay this is format just whatever format do you prefer i prefer pngs because i don't know just pngs are like most common and render location where do you want to store these images first frame last frame that's like the size of the animation in default it will select these numbers here and name in sec sequence starts with so this is like the number that will be added behind your base name okay you can put like whatever number you want if you have some you know continue continuation of some animation you want to use it's good you know to add the last number you've used in the previous animation or whatever but okay this is for the Im image sequences and now to render this is actually this can actually render into some video format for example gif matroshka file ogg or mpeg4 it's like whatever you want you can select the file name or you know the file <laughs> destination and stuff and there's one more thing you're gonna need and it's ffmpeg right now on my system I can't really install my ffmpeg to it and let it work because my system is kinda broken right now I have to fix it so I can't really show you how this works and how to find it basically you have to find the path to your ffmpeg like program or whatever it is uh, you can check how to how to find the path and how to install the ffmpeg you can check out the Krita Krita website I will let you this link in the description so you can check it out on your own and there is like a whole tutorial how to do how to install it on every platform and how to find the path and everything so you can do it based on this well and then you can just click let's put some name here okay, let's say gif you can just name here and if there will be some path to whatever yeah. mm. I don't know. Doesn't really matter what I select because it won't be working. But yeah, it will just export frames and fetching palette, and it will export your f animation into your container or you know format you want. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. So there are huge changes in Krita 3.1. I really like the exporting, the exporting option which was like the one thing that ca that was kind of missing and yeah it's really good and I think the Krita will be pretty good animation software in few few months when all the little tweakies and confusing and all the confuseness will be gone yeah so thanks for watching and see you next time